In this video, we will start working on shadow detail recovery. So we will be focusing on the subject and on the foreground. As I've mentioned in the previous clip, we are going to create a mask based on luminosity range. This is a fantastic tool. That's a new tool. It wasn't available in the previous version of Capture One, Capture One 11. So it's a fresh thing and it works really well. So let's create a new layer. I'm going to add new field layer and I'm going to call this layer subject. And now we are going to hit the button Luma range. So that way we will start creating mask that will be calculated by Capture One engine. Let's first tick this little button here, display mask. So that way we see what is included in our mask. As I've mentioned before, we are going to be working on detail recovery. So we want to separate the subject and the foreground, basically the pitch black area. We want to separate it. We want to, we want to cover it with a mask and mask out from the background, from the sea and the sky. So now if we display the mask, we can see that the mask includes basically everything. And what we are after is to include only the dark areas. So this is our black point. This is the range. So let's just move it all the way to the left. We are going to include all the blacks. And now we are going to be manipulating with these two sliders by pulling them towards the left hand side. You can see that we are narrowing the range of our mask. There is a very powerful algorithm that is working under the hood that is working with this tool and the results are really spectacular. So let's position first the top slider. This is going to be showing the range of the mask. And now let's just move it fraction a little bit further to the right. Now I have selected the numeric value and I'm operating with arrows on my keyboard. This is the most precise method to operate with these values. And now if I start moving the bottom slider for the white point, I will be affecting the transition. So if I would move the point just under the top one, those sliders are positioned now one above the other. So now with the values when they are equal 67, 67, the transition is very harsh, very hard. If I start moving the bottom slider and if I start increasing this numeric value, you can see that the mask is going to be much more harmonious. The transition is going to be much softer. So let's leave it at around one to 4, 124. At this point, I'm not going to touch the radius slider. Let's apply the mask and let's see how it will perform. So we have applied the mask. Now, if I hit M on my keyboard, we can have preview of the mask, having the second icon selected and double clicking on the image. Let's get rid of the browser. We don't need those thumbnails at this point. Let's hit Command B. OK, so we have a little bit more space. Let's increase the image. So I am hitting Command and plus on my keyboard on the Mac, Control plus on the PC. We can see that the mask is not that accurate as it could be, but don't worry, we can fine tune it further. Let's hit again M. So the mask is going to be hidden and let's actually apply the adjustment because we cannot really judge how the mask is going to perform before we actually work with the adjustment. So the point here was to apply the shadow recovery. I'm going to be using the HDR tool, the high dynamic range tool. So let's move over down here and I'm interested in the shadow range. So let's pull the slider towards the right hand side. I don't want to overdo this. If we go too far, we will get this very ugly noise. So let's just maybe decrease the value further. I think 
around 75% is fine, especially that we are not going to look at that magnified image. So we are interested in the whole scene. I'm not going to be cropping out further this image to the portrait. That's completely not the point. We are going to leave the crop as it is. So I'm interested in the overall scene. So if we are judging looking at the overall image, this value is quite okay. We don't see the noise. It looks fine. So if I switch off this layer, we can see how this looked like before. Now we see how this looks like after applying the HDR tool. Let's now again zoom in and let's see how the mask is performing. So everything looks quite good here on the left hand side. However, here we have this purple fringing. Let's just switch it off and on again. The purple fringing we can actually try to fix moving backwards. This could be done at the very beginning of the edit. I have moved to the lens correction tool tab and I'm going to just select chromatic aberration and hit on these three little dots and select analyze. So that way capture one analyzed my image and done what it was possible to remove the fringing the chromatic aberration which helped quite a lot so this could be done with the chromatic aberration correction let's now move back and let's see if we can fine-tune our mask further to make this that edge less visible to make the transition softer and looking more naturally. So to fine tune the mask, we need to just have our layer selected and hit the Luma range button again. Here we have the settings that we have applied before. And now we are going to touch the radius slider. That way we will be able to change the transition to make the transition softer. We can display the mask by hitting this button and we can see that the mask in fact is quite harsh here. So let's just move slider towards the right hand side and you can see that by increasing the numeric value we are softening the edge and the mask should be performing better. Let's leave it at around 45 if I switch off this button. We can see that this purple edge is softer. We are not going to be cropping to portrait, so this should work well. If I now switch off and switch on, we can see that this high dynamic range tool we were working with detail in a shadow, shadow range, it did the job very well. So this is our image before and after. So I want to illustrate the point that in a few minutes by combining these two tools, mask based on luminosity range created with Luma range tool and HDR tool, uh, detail recovery, in this case it was shadow, in a few minutes you can perform this operation. If you would mask the subject by hand, you could use the auto mask option that was available in Capture One 11. However, the fantastic thing is that if you create your mask manually, if you would use brush and if you have painted mask like this manually, then if you would move to another picture from this series, the mask would be fixed. If the model have moved a little bit to the right or to the left, whatever, if you change the angle, the mask will never match. You would have to recreate the mask, you would have to manually paint it again. However, the beauty of the mask created with the luminosity range, the mask was calculated automatically by Capture One, by the algorithm. The beauty is that if you copy the adjustment, if you use the button and copy the adjustment to your clipboard, and then if you reapply this adjustment to series of different pictures, but taken with similar lighting conditions, Capture One will 
recalculate the mask and it will be fitted perfectly. Right now we are not going to get into it. I want to continue working on this edit. I want to continue working on color grading. However, remember, as I promised you in the previous clip, I will show you how to do this and we will be color grading different images with reusing the very same mask that was created with the Luma range tool. Just remember that the Luma range mask will be automatically recalculated by Capture One and even if the model shifted position, if the Luma range was similar, the mask will be fitted perfectly. Okay, so in this video we have been working with the Luma range mask and we have recovered detail in shadow. Let's move over to the next clip and let's add another layer that will recover shadow detail globally. See you in the next clip.